Hi there, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another virtual Pages of History Storytime program. My name is Pam and I'm the Education Coordinator at the Westmoreland Historical Society in Historic Town. And today we're going to read Now and Ben, The Modern Inventions of Benjamin Franklin by Jean Beretta. So Benjamin Franklin was a really important historic figure during the time of the American Revolution. And that's the same time period that Hannistown existed in. So we're going to learn about many of the different inventions that Ben Franklin created, and you might recognize some of them today. Now and then, we think about Ben, Dr. Benjamin Franklin to be precise, and we think about his many inventions. Inventions he originated more than 200 years ago. So here we see a picture of Ben Franklin, and we see some of his family members too, including his wife and children. It was as if Ben could see into the future. Almost everything he created is still around today. For instance, so, like I said, he's from a long time ago, but some of the things he created are still around. So, he looks a little out of place in, in this modern street scene. Now, our newspapers are filled with illustrations. So you might see a newspaper with pictures and drawings. But Ben was the first to print a political cartoon in America the cartoon encouraged the American colonies to join together or die like the disconnected snake. And this was back during the time of the French and Indian War, which happened before the American Revolution. But the snake went on to become a really important image used during the American Revolution to represent America and the young United States. And it also appears on the Westmoreland County flag that we fly at Hannistown. So we can thank Ben for our newspapers having pictures. Now, bifocals are very common. Bifocals combine two sets of lenses into one pair of glasses. The bottom lens helps see near, and the top lens helps see far. Ben originally designed bifocals for himself as he grew tired of switching between two pairs of glasses. So a lot of people still use bifocals today. Now, our world relies on electricity. In the 18th century, many people still believed that lightning was an act of anger and punishment from God. Ben was one of the scientists who discovered the true nature of electricity and how to use it. He learned that lightning is electricity when he attached a small metal wire to the top of a kite and gathered electricity from a storm cloud. So the lightning didn't actually strike the kite, but instead, all of the electricity happening up in the sky during the storm would travel down the wire and he could feel little sparks um, coming from a key that he was holding in his hand. And that's how he conducted his experiment. Now, many buildings and homes use lightning rods to protect against lightning strikes. Ben invented the lightning rod and was the first to use it. The pointed iron rod acts like a magnet and grabs an approaching lightning bolt from the sky before it can strike a rooftop. The electricity then travels down a long wire to the ground, and this prevents fires and keeps dangerous amounts of electricity away from the house. So there we can see the lightning striking and then going all the way down to the ground. And it looks like Ben's pretty happy with his invention. Now, this gadget goes by many names, such as the grabber. Everyone has seen one. It's the long stick that helps grab items from out of reach places. So here we see somebody using a grabber to get some cereal from the grocery store. And Ben invented the original device and called it the long arm because it worked like a very long arm. So here we see him grabbing a book from a shelf. Now, swimmers and divers use flippers to move faster through the water. 
Ben invented things even when he was a boy. He was an avid swimmer and built wooden flippers for both his hands and his feet. Now, ships travel across the Gulf Stream to take advantage of the faster current. And Ben measured, charted, and publicized the Gulf Stream during his eight voyages across the Atlantic Ocean. So here we see the, how the Gulf Stream in the, in the ocean moves and how he was able to use it to get from the American colonies over to Europe. Now, we understand and accept the benefits of vitamin C. Ben was an early promoter of eating citrus fruits and to help prevent a disease called scurvy. Now for a musical interlude. Ben invented the glass harmonica. He was able to create music by simply touching his wet fingers to a row of spinning glass bowls. Mozart and Beethoven were so moved by the sounds they composed for the instrument. So here we see how his harmonica instrument works. Today, glass harmonicas are very rare. You are more likely to find one in a museum than in a music store. Now, our fireplaces are very efficient and easy to use. So here we see a family inside, reading books by the fireplace, roasting some marshmallows. And Ben improved on the primitive fireplaces of his day when he designed the Pennsylvania fireplace, later renamed the Franklin Stove. He built it with iron to contain the heat from a, a fire long after the logs were burned. It also sat away from the wall to heat the room more evenly. So here we see the way that his stove worked. The smoke ventilation was not perfect, but later inventions improved it. Before Ben's fireplace, indoor smoke could be suffocating. So here we see him inside and he's relaxing and enjoying the warmth of the fire without having to worry about the smoke. It's able to go up the chimney much more easily. Now, chairs come in all shapes and sizes. Ben designed two chairs that are still very useful. The riding chair, a combined desk and chair in one. And the library chair was a combination of a chair and a stepladder. So he created a lot of things that had multiple uses. Now, everyone has seen a rocking chair, but many but not many have seen Dr. Franklin's rocking chairs. Ben invented one rocking chair with a fan on top and one the churned butter. So he got pretty creative with some of his inventions. Now, every year we observe daylight savings time, which means we set our clocks ahead one hour in the springtime. As a result, it stays darker longer in the morning when most people are sleeping and stays light longer at the end of the day so we can save more energy. In the fall, we return the clocks back to standard time. Ben suggested this idea in one of his essays as a way to save money by burning fewer candles. Farmers could also gain more work time during the evening. Daylight saving time was not officially practiced until World War I more than a hundred years later. And as for clocks, Ben designed the first clock with a second hand. So there we see him with his clock and he is watching all the farmers at work late into the evening. Now, every automobile has an odometer to measure the distance it travels. So here's a school bus and it's tracking the mileage. Ben invented the odometer when he was postmaster general so he could measure his postal routes. He was able to figure out how far he went when he was delivering mail. Now, almost every large community includes a library, a hospital, a post office, a fire department, and a sanitation department. Here we can see what some of those places look like today. Ben lived in a city that had none of these establishments, so he helped organize the first one of each. The Library Company of Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania Hospital, 
He's got some sanitation workers here, post office, and the Union Fire Company. So there's what an old-fashioned um, fire truck looks like, and it's not um, an automobile, but rather it's pulled by a horse. So he helped make communities better, too. Now and then, we owe our thanks to Ben for his important inventions. But many would agree that his greatest accomplishments came in the form of documents, documents that helped shape the world. Ben had a pivotal role in developing America's Constitution, the Treaty of Alliance with France, the Treaty of Peace with England, and the Declaration of Independence. It's remarkable that one man could achieve so much in one lifetime. He has, cre he has certainly helped to form the modern world. Will his contributions help to form the future? So maybe some of the things he created will look very different many years from now. And maybe there's something someday that you'll invent that will make it into a history book like this one. Here we've got some more illustrations with his different inventions. All the way from his the fins that he would use to swim faster, to libraries, the odometer that would track how far he would travel, political cartoons, chairs, and many, many different types of documents that help shape American history. So I hope you enjoyed learning about Dr. Benjamin Franklin, again, another really important um, uh, person during the time of the American Revolution. I hope you can come out and visit us at Historic Hannistown sometime, where you can learn even more about the local history of the American Revolution. Well, thanks so much for joining us for this week's story time, and I'll see you soon. Bye.